Hello there! Today we're going to be shortening a reed. Sometimes you get a reed that's too long or it has damage on one side and you need to uh, cut off one of the ends. With um, the old style or the wooden and metal style reeds, this is entirely possible. You're going to want to get your reed. You'll want a box cutter or some sort of knife or scissors, a sharpie, a hacksaw, some clamps, a hammer, and pliers, and some pieces of wood for your clamps. And those are the tools that you're going to need. So the first thing we want to do is take our reed and figure out how long we want it. In this case, we're going to just shorten it um, so that the overall width, that is the width that will fit in the looms beater, is going to be, we're gonna shorten it so it's 18 inches overall. Um, so to do that, I'm going to take our Sharpie and we're going to mark where is 18 inches. And this helps so that you make it the right length. What I like to do is then draw on the reed itself. I'm not um, worried too much about making it exact. And this just shows me where I want to cut. Now, I'm going to set it up here on our handy table and setting up our clamps. I love these clamps. Um, in fact, I only need one clamp for this reed because it's so short, but if you have a longer reed, you'll want to set up a second clamp so that it won't uh, uh, rotate while you're sawing. So the next thing before you saw is going to be get your pliers and we're going to peel back this uh, duct tape that's on the side. It could be any sort of tape. We're going to carefully pull these end caps off. You want to be careful. See how I'm rocking back and forth? It feels like pulling teeth. You don't want to uh, squeeze so hard that you break, you deform the cap. So we're going to be putting those back on. So let's go ahead and do this one. So up and down while I pull. Maybe a little back and forth. I'm not squeezing so hard that it ruins the cap. Um, I'm going to pull this out and save it for later. Next, the fun part. Keeping in mind that I want it 18 inches overall, this is where I marked. Now if I do it, if I cut here, um, it's actually going to be longer than 18 inches because that cap adds a little bit of space. So I can look here and I can look at the size of my cap and I'm actually going to go a little bit shorter and saw. Now this is going to be loud, so cover your ears. Boom, done. That was the hardest part. I'm going to go ahead and peel the um, tape back again. Any of these extra um, reed dents. See this string that's wrapped around? That's what spaces the reed dents. And so between every wrap, there's another reed piece. I'm going to do both sides. Now, how far do I go is a great question. We're going to take our cap and just fit it on here and see. Or you can set it next to it and say, yeah, that's about far enough. Um, I usually take this last metal piece out just for good luck. Now that we've got this at the right height, we've got both of these pulled off, we can remember how to use a clamp. And now we're ready to put our caps back on. Now this is sometimes tricky depending on the reed. This one's going to be easy. So um, if you feel like it, you can make sure that this is put the right way up. I don't 
see a number on here, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, let's, uh, this will just go right back into place. And if you can't get it in, use our hammer. We can hammer this back in if it doesn't uh, go in easily by itself, like this one is not going in easy. And we just want to make sure that it goes below the wood. Okay. Next, we're going to put our metal cap on. Again, if it doesn't want to quite go on, gently hammer it into place. And then taking our nails, you can see there's little holes on top of the cap. And this part is important to have your reed upright. I usually do this on the floor, but I'm doing it on the table for you guys because the floor is cement here and it gives me a better hammering surface. Okay, making sure that this is straight up and down. You don't want to get it uh, turned at an angle. Hammer it in. And there's usually two nails, sometimes a staple. Um, Sometimes the nails are really terrible and you've got to go find some sort of little finishing nails will work. Here at ETC, we have a whole little bag of these for when I actually lose it and need to find a new one. All right, last steps. We don't really want to leave these. Simply cut them. Fold your tape back into place. Um, if your tape is all falling apart, you can replace it with duct tape. Um, it's usually what's on there anyway. Uh, if you want to go fancy, you can use gaffer's tape. Um, but anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.